dear friends, warm greetings again to another episode of In His Name. I'm here with Evangelist Samuel Morumbe, the Crusade Director of In His Name. We win Africa for Jesus together. And we are here together to discuss another red hot passage of scripture. I know you are going to be abundantly blessed, so please join us for this little Bible study. Sam, let's get going again. Yes, I'm so excited and I'm um, looking forward to what the Lord is about to do today. Amen, I am as Amen. well. And today we are delving a little bit into the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 4, Amen. the story of Cain and Abel. Amen. Uh, so let us read from verse 1 and then we will take it from there. Praise God. Now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Sam, this is a heavy portion of scripture. Amen. It speaks about the consequences of sin. That's right. And in this story, the heart of God broke for a second time. That's Adam and true. Adam and Eve, he made in his image, he made them perfectly holy, righteous without sin. We know the story, they fell into sin. Yes. Now we are speaking about their children and, and one of their children likewise falls into sin and God's heart is again ripped in two. The sin is a problem. Yes. Man cannot stand against it and win. It is, it is absolutely impossible. Mm. Um, let, let's start our discussion by speaking about the offerings that were brought to the Lord. That's right, yes. Now here we have Abel. Abel was a shepherd yes. and he brought, the Bible says, the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. Cain was a farmer, yes. you know, and he brought a, a bunch of vegetables, you know, That's and right. fruit. Yes. Now, you know, one has to ask the question, why did God reject Cain's offering and, and accept Abel's offering? Now, I've heard a lot of messages preached on this, and we know that some preachers say because Abel's was the first fruit and Cain's was not. But now the fact is, the Bible doesn't tell us much about Cain's offering. The Bible just says it was an offering. That's right. And the Bible yes. does not specifically say this was not, this was not Cain's first fruit. Yes. You know, this was just an offering. Yes. The Bible does not specify. Exactly. And, and I'm sure God did not reject it before because he prefers meat to vegetables. No, not, not at you, all. You know, Cain's profession was a farmer. Abel's was a shepherd. God would only expect from them what they could offer. Yes. And um, so in my mind, 
God did not reject Cain's offering because it was vegetables and not meat. No. He did not reject it because it was not the best. Yes. The Bible does not specify that it was not the best. That's right, yes. For me, what God picked up on was the heart of Cain. Yes. There was something going on in his heart. There was hatred. There was anger against his brother. God saw that and God knew if he did not deal with that, if he did not cut it short. That's right, yes. Cain would be in big trouble. Yes. He would be in big trouble. It, it was Jesus who taught. Yes. Matthew chapter 5, Jesus specifically said murder begins in the heart. That's right, yes. And Jesus said in that passage when he spoke about that, he said, if you want to bring an offering to the Lord and you have something against your brother, leave your offering at the altar. First, go and make peace with your brother with and your brother. then come and offer it. Yes. So in my mind, there was some bad stuff going on in Cain's heart. Yes. God wanted to address it. He said, I do not accept your offering. You have bad feelings towards your brother. We need to deal with the sin is lying at the door. It wants to grab you. It wants to destroy your life. You have to say no to it. Amen. It, it is a problem when someone, you know, carries a lot of bitterness yes. in their hearts, yes. unforgiveness, yes. Jealousy, jealousy towards one another. Yes. So God always looks at the intent of the heart. Amen. He looks at what is behind, you know, in your giving. He yes. looks at the heart yes. of giving. Yes. And um, in, this, in this case, when we look at it, and uh, also like you said that, you know, Adam, I like how you brought it, mm. that Adam the father mm. had also committed sin mm. against God. And you can see it's like a, a generational yeah. kind of thing going from one yes. family to the other. Yes. And here as it is, it passed on to the son. Yes. And what is happening is the picture that I saw is Adam sinned against God. Mm. And now the son Abel is sinning against who? I, against man. Yes, yes, Cain. You know? Cain, yeah, Cain, 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 Cain is sinning. now sinning against who? Against man. Yes. You understand? Yes. And 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 the sin is what is murder. Mm. You know, it's it's now wanting to do things, you know, in the right way, but according to man's strength. Yes. And that is a religious spirit mm. that was in Cain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is the spirit that God wants to deal with here. Yes, exactly. So he, he rejects the offering. He tries to warn Cain. Yes. You know, sin lies at the door. Its desire is for you. Yes. But you should rule over it. He's trying to say to Cain, you can. That's you right. can say no to it. You can say no to it. Yes. But as we see here, Cain was not able to say no to it. He was and what? as we know in our own lives, before we came to Jesus and before Jesus helped us That's right. to say no to temptations, to say no to things, yes. it is impossible to get victory over sin ourselves. You can't. You spoke about it in a previous episode that you used to wake up in the middle of the night and go and wake a friend for a cigarette because you had such a craving in you for a cigarette not in only, the middle of the night. Not only that, Tammy. I mean, sin was knocking on your door. Yeah, to, to, to go a, a step further, you know, when I was addicted, Addicted on drugs, yeah. you know, crack and all those yeah. kind of things, you know. I mean, I would make a phone call, you know, knowing that, you know, there are some drug people that, you know, yeah. would come out and yeah. bring me some stuff. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night because I needed it at that yes. time. Yes. So that I can be able to satisfy, mm. you know, that uh, that thirsty that we're speaking about. Exactly. You know? that, that only uh, God could, could yes, quench. That, uh, that loneliness in the inside of mm. you. That thing that eats up. You know, mm. sin, Tammy, is like cancer. It, yes. it chows your it's bones. It's a disease you know? on the it inside. It eats you up from the inside. I yeah. like the message uh, long ago, you know. I know now you're no longer preach on that <laughs> message, you know, you always say it, you know, you say, it, you know, uh, yeah, you know, sin, you know, it eats up your bones, you know, it's like a, it's like a sickness, a sickness. you know, it's a sickness that eats you yeah. up from the inside. Yeah. It eats your soul, you know, yeah. people cannot see in the outside, outside you look perfect, you exactly. know, and you are well dressed. And here we can see mm. with Cain and Abel, mm. there are two brothers yes. and both of them, they went before the Lord to present their offering. Yeah. 
But now the Lord looks into the intent yes. of each of uh, and heart. everyone's heart. And the, the uh, and Cain's heart mm -hmm. was not, you know, he was not offering it out of the of the heart. Exactly. And and if we if we look at that, that is is actually such a beautiful picture. God yes. did not reject Cain's offering because he didn't like him as no. much as he liked Abel. Not at all. He he rejected it because he wanted to help Cain. He wanted to warn him. That's right. Yes. You know, you 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 warn a friend. Yes, if you love them. If you love them, you warn them. You That's say, right. careful, watch where you're going. This is not going to end well. Yes. God warned. Cain and he still carried on down the wrong path. Yes. And this this is what fascinates me. Even God, the creator of the universe, warning Cain did not make Cain take a step back and go, whoa, what am I doing? That's this right. is not going to end well. And after Cain had committed that murder, when the Lord addressed him and said, where is Abel, your brother? Yeah. Now, did God not know what had happened? Of course he knew what happened. That's right. He yes. was giving Cain an opportunity to repent. To make things right with and God. And so he could be restored. Yes. He was giving him the chance to repent and be destroyed and be restored. And Cain responded cheekily. Yes. How should I know? Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. Now that, that that is when when bitterness, you know, has entered one heart one's heart. When someone and is guilt so bitter, and condemnation you know, and, and all the condemnation yeah. and all, you know, the self judgment yes. that he had already passed on himself. He's defensive. You know, now he's becoming very defensive yeah. and now he becomes even rude to, to, to God, the God <laughs> to the only one, to the savior between the heavens and the earth, to the only one that can give him peace exactly. and salvation. Exactly. And he becomes rude to that very same person. Exactly. And that that's phenomenal. You know, we can be rude to a lot of people and maybe get away with it, but you, you cannot be rude to God and, exactly. and get away with it. Yes. And God was crying out to him in love, giving him an opportunity to repent. Yes. And Cain threw that opportunity back in God's face. Yes. And God in verse 10, I, I can hear the agony in God's voice. Yes. What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. What have you done? That's why the is. heart of God is broken. Mm. And that's what people must understand. You know, when we commit sin, yes, we might be hurting ourselves. We might be hurting somebody else, but we hurt God the most of all. That's right. Because is. as we've said in previous episodes, when God originally created man and woman, he created them perfectly in his image. Yes. Righteous filled with love, filled with perfect peace, perfect joy. That's Sin right. came in and destroyed that. And the only way to now be reconciled with our God again and to be restored, that righteousness, that joy, that peace, yes. is to accept Jesus as our Savior That's so the blood is. can deal with the sin. Yes. So God's heart is broken here. Yes. Broken. When we sin, we are sinning first and foremost against God. Yes. Not against ourselves, not against our brother, but against God. We break his heart. Yes. And I, I firmly believe that if, if Cain had repented here, if he had fallen on his knees and repented, God would have been able to restore him more than this punishment that he had to now deal with. That's very true. Um, and, and, and we look at the punishment. You are cursed from the earth, a vagabond, a fugitive. Mm. You, are, you are hidden from my face. You know, being hidden from God's face, this is the ultimate consequence of sin. That's right. This is sin separating us from the holy God. Yes. We cannot come into fellowship with him because of his holiness and our sin. This is the ultimate price we pay for being sinners. That's right. Until yes. we accept Jesus and he can come with his blood and he can wash us clean. Then fellowship is restored again. Fellowship is restored. And, yes. and often people say, oh, but what if I sin again? You know, what happens then? That's why. Right. And, and, and we want to encourage our viewers, you know, don't, don't worry. Don't think, oh, but I can't accept Jesus because I'm not perfect. If I accept him and I sin again, he's going to run out of my heart because the sin is going to drive him out. My friend, once you have accepted Jesus, he comes, he makes a home inside of you. He is there to stay. You become his child. So even if you do something 
that you know you should not have done, you can just come to him. You can say, Jesus, I repent. I am sorry. Forgive me. And he will say, you are my child. I pick you up. I dust you off. My blood is active inside of you. You are clean. You are clean. Come, 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 come. Let us keep going all the way to heaven. So be encouraged today. Amen. But Cain did not repent. He, he was not. cheeky. That's right. And, and there, there were consequences for his sin. Like we said, that being a fugitive, being a vagabond, that, that speaks to me of a lack of peace. It speaks of a restlessness. Mm. Like you spoke a little bit earlier, you know, sin, it, it, it torments you. Yes. There's no peace. Yes. It, it breaks you on the inside. It is a disease. That's right. You might look all beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, you are bruised, you are battered, you are broken. That's there right. is a disease eating away at you. Yes. Because when, when you look at it, Tammy, uh, I mean, at the same time, you know, um, you know, after all the opportunities that God gave to mm. Cain, you know, for him to mend his way yes. with God, you know, Cain carried on, you know, becoming even more harder. And that is what happens, you know, when sin rules your heart because sin yes. enslaves the heart. Mm. You know, sin becomes your master. Now, sin was becoming a master to, to Cain. And when you listen to what God says, you know, he, he, he wants to help him out, mm -hmm. you know, like you said in, yes. the, in the beginning, you know. He wants, you know, the, 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 the heart of a father, mm -hmm. of a loving father, it's always to give an opportunity because remember, mm -hmm. he was created in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. And uh, uh, even to the father, you know, Adam, the Bible says, you know, in the very beginning, God also warned Adam and, uh, and yes. Eve. And he said to them, you know, you can have whatever that you need in the garden, but to this one, do not touch. Mm. You know, the only thing that God needed for man, it is for us to be obedient. And, and obedient for our own good. That's right. You know, he created us. He knows how we work. He knows what will, will help us. He knows what will destroy us. That's right. It's like buying a new appliance for your kitchen. Yes. You know, you need to make sure you read the instruction manual. Exactly. So you know what is going to make that appliance work and what is going to break it. I mean, do this, don't do that. I mean, even with a car, I mean, if for you to exactly. drive a car, you need to go, you know, to the driving school, you know, yes. where you learn and understand the signs of the roads and everything. So that, that is for your own safety. Amen. You know, I hear many people, you know, saying to me, tell me, they say, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I'm in the, in, in the African community. Mm. You know, you will hear people saying, you know, oh, God is so unfair. You know, why are people so dying, you know, in an accident and all those kind of things are said. Listen, you know, in every institution, there are rules, rules. and rules have to be obeyed. Yes. You know, if, if people say, if you do not have a license and you did not go to a driving mm. school to be taught how to be safe on the road, when you drive, you are going to cost lives of many innocent people. Yes. And that is the same thing with God. God also has given us his manual, and that manual is the word of God. That is the Bible. And we need to do what? To be obedient Amen. and to, to, to incline our ear to the wisdom that comes from God. Because when you look at the heart of God here, tell me, as you said in the beginning, God keeps on, you know, giving guidance to this young man. Even though he has already get gotten out of the way, you know, God still comes to him. Mm -hmm. as a loving father with a with a heart that is filled with love and say listen it's not over Amen. there is a chance for you Amen. even after god pronounced a curse that you know that comes from the very ground where he committed the curse against god still gives him an opportunity because he now says you know i'm now a vagabond wherever i go people are going to kill me yes. and god still protects him still, this is this is the heart of god like we said sam cain Cain is cheeky to God. He throws back the opportunity to repent. That's right. Even after God has to proclaim a punishment, like you said now, even then, God is still merciful. Yes. He still shows mercy. And, and that's a beautiful picture for me when God says, I put a mark on you. You know, nobody is allowed to touch you because that also speaks of God being the ultimate judge. That's right. God is the only one who is allowed to judge. To he judge. is the only one perfectly pure, perfectly holy, perfectly righteous. That's and right, he Jennifer. demands that he, he is the judge. Yes. He has got the right to judge. And so he protects 
this man That's right, who, yes. who is making life very difficult for him. Yes. Um, because of the love that he has for, me, for him, he, he cannot stop loving him regardless of what Cain does. Yeah. And, and what's, what's even more incredible for me is in verse 13, Cain says to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Cain even then does not repent. Yes. He is, he is not so shocked at his sin. He is more shocked at the punishment. That's right. He is yes. not aggrieved over his sin. He is aggrieved at the punishment. Yes. He is still not repentant. He is, he is complaining repenting. about his punishment. That's right. Yes. He says it's, it's unfair. It's more than I can handle. Yeah. And even after that, God shows him mercy and protects him. It's, it's incredible. That's what we do. I mean, I, I, I was in the world before. Mm. And uh, whenever, you know, we are in the world of crime, you mm. know, um, whatever that we are doing, mm. if one of our friends gets shot, you know, it, it's like, you know, I, I mean, God is unfair to me. Why did I get, <laughs> yeah, why did I get shot? You know? That fascinates me. And uh, yes, that's, that's the response of every gangster. You know, that uh, why did I go through what I went through? I don't deserve this. This is not good, you know. I mean, God will, should have protected me. Wow. Because it, it is like, it is my right, you know, to do what I'm doing. Even though I'm sinning, you know, I'm in the rightful place. That's what religion says. So there's lots of canes running around there. That's, that's what religion say. Religion say... All the wrong that you're doing is right. If you mm. read the book of Isaiah, mm. the prophet, he actually says, you know, sinners keep on saying, you know, what is wrong is right. Yes, yes. What is black is white. Yes. You know, yes. that's what sin tells you. Yes. Because, you know, you try to justify yourself. Exactly. And, and the devil is the arch deceiver. That's so he right. tries to convince you that no, this is this is a perfectly acceptable way of life. That's right. And yes. you've got the right to carry on living the way you want to live. Yes. And if God does not back you up, then he's unfair. And then no one has got a right to judge you or to condemn yes. you. Yes. And uh, not even God. Yeah, not even God. And, and I mean, in the in the days that we are living in, uh, I mean, we Christians have the responsibility of speaking, you know, the word of God, yeah. you know, because we are ambassadors of we the are. kingdom of God. And we have to tell people the truth of yeah. the gospel. And when we tell them the truth, most of them, they take offense and they say, what? You are judging me. Yeah. That, is a, that is a sinful person. Yes. When someone is not willingly to be corrected by the word of God, what they do yeah. is they take offense and they say, no, the, 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 the evangelist is judging me. Exactly. And, and it's not us doing the judging, it's us just preaching from the Word. And the Word does the, the judging. The Word judgment. of God, the Word does the judging. Amen. And, and, and it shows a guilty conscience because they, right. they feel it. Yes. They feel it. And, and that's also good because it means the Holy Spirit is at work showing yes. them yes. that this is actually not right. Exactly. You might think it right. You might hope that it's right. That's right. But yes. it's not right. Fall on your knees and repent so God can forgive and save and restore you. Amen. Um, Gosh, Sam, it, it, it amazes me over and over again how the Bible emphasizes the heart that God has for us. Yes. You know, sometimes people want to stay away from God because they think if they come to, if they come to Him, He will just berate them. He will condemn them. God wants to love. Well, he wants, e everything He does is out of love. He is not a, a dictator sitting up there in heaven on his throne, just wanting us to all do what he wants us to do because he wants to be right and he wants to be in control all the time. Everything he does is out of love. He wants to see people saved. Amen. He wants to live in them. He wants to see them forever in heaven when they die. Amen. Well, Tammy, I mean, I am a perfect example mm. of that, you know. Uh, I mean, back while I was still in mm. the world, I never even thought there is a God in heaven, a God who forgives sins. You know, I mean, I was, I grew up in a very religious and, uh, you know, occultic kind of uh, family yes. where they believe in all kind of witchcraft and all those kind of things, you know. And, um, and the, the little light that I had, mm -hmm. you know, it was religiously. And, uh, you know, it's only the, past, uh, the priest who had the, the right to hold the Bible, you know. And uh, we had no right to touch the Bible. It was called the Holy Book. Wow. And uh, yet, you know, the only time that I was able to hear, and that was when I was in prison, to hear that, you know, there is this man, despiteful of all that I've done, yes. he loves me. Yes. Despiteful of all kind of horrible things that I was doing, even at that present time, he still said, I love Amen. you. 
And tell me, when I embraced the love of God, yes. it's where I began to see God in a very different way. Amen. It's where I begin to view God in a different way. Amen. And that can only happen when one has accepted that mm. gift, that precious gift of mm. salvation. Amen. It is something out of this world. Mm. It is something extraordinary. Mm. It is something that you cannot begin to, you know, to put it into a little computer and try, you know, to understand it. God can never be understood. He can mm. only be revealed. Amen. And, and you know, Sam, you, you speak about knowing the love of God. Yes. You know, I know, I know some believers... You know, I know in my life, I accepted Jesus when I was very young. Yes. You know, we know that I was five years old. Now, my relationship with him at the beginning, yes. it didn't have that intimacy. Yes. Not, not yet. It was later on in my life. I, yes. was, I was a teenager in my early teen years. Yes. And I cried out to God. I said, God, I know I'm saved. Jesus, I know you live inside of me. That's right. But I want to know this love. Yes. You know, I was honest with the Lord because we can always be honest Amen. with the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm taught in youth group that I need to love you more than I love my mother, more than I love my father. But I said, Lord, I am honest with you. I do not. Yes. I said, but I want to. I want to. I said, show your love to me. Mm. Show your love to me. And Sam, it was one day during a praise and worship service. I was just worshiping the Lord in church like I did every Sunday. That's right. And all of a sudden, I felt a love wrap around me. And like anything I had ever experienced, it saturated me and it has never left me. That's right. And, and we want to encourage people out there. If you are not yet saved, you need to call on the name of Jesus. You need to say, Jesus, save me now so he can save you. And I want to speak to believers out there who might not yet have experienced that love that we are talking about. You might still have God in a box. You might still see him as something else other than a loving father. That's right. You, I encourage you, we encourage you, call on him right now. Ask him, God, show me your love. And we promise you, he will show himself and he will not just be on the inside and you will not just be going to heaven, but you will live in that love bubble 24 seven. It is going to be fantastic. Dear friends, we love you very much. Connect with me on social media. Let us know how this episode has impacted you. Until next time, may God richly bless you.